Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to take a look at the few cases where life cycles still make sense. With the introduction of Strapi 5, we now recommend for best practices, you now use document server middleware versus using lifecycle hooks. And I'll make sure to link to the detailed blog post written by Ben Irvin, one of our senior backend engineers that outlines the use cases and how to set it up. But there are still few instances where using lifecycle hooks makes sense. And the two instances are when you want to make sure when you're using either our user's permission plugin or using our media update package. In today's example, I'm going to show you how we're going to use lifecycle hooks to update our user's permission plugin to allow us to create a new user and associate a user profile with it as well as pass additional data. So before we jump into the code, I want to show you a quick demo. So I have a simple application, which has a simple signup form. Here, you're able to create your user as well as pass some optional information. What will happen when we submit the form? If you take a look at our Strap application, we have our content manager and we have our user and user profile. So when we create a user, we're going to create a new user and automatically create a relationship to your user profile that will have all the additional data. So let's look at the content type builder to get more details. So our user profile has our basic information and we want to make sure that we keep the user locked down. And if we want to access user profile, we're just going to use this user profile content where you could store any information that you want about the user and make it accessible to your API without having to directly call the user. Instead, you'll be able to find the user profile based on this relation to the user, which is going to be the user ID. And if you look at it in more detail, it's just one way relationship to our user. And to accomplish this, we're going to use two hooks. And that is after create and before delete. So back in my application, I'm going to go ahead and update my user. I don't want to use my email for the username, my email password. Uh, I'm just going to make sure to do monkey one, two, three, four. And for full name, I'll say Paul Bratz and bio. I love strappy and react. And now when I click sign up, it's going to go ahead and sign us in and it's going to redirect us to our dashboard. I did not create this page because the most important part I want to showcase that our signup form works because that's what this tutorial is about. So if you jump back into our strap application, go back to our content manager. Now we take a look at the user. We have our new user that has been created, but more importantly, when we take a look at the user profile, we could see that we automatically created the user profile when the user was created through our login form. And we're going to use another hook in a life cycle to listen to when we delete the user. So for instance, here, if I go ahead and delete the user, it's going to automatically delete the user profile. So if I refresh, notice that there are no users available. So now that we could see how this application works and how we're able to pass additional data via our signup form, let's look in code and see how it works. By the way, you could find the project repo in the description below. And I'll quickly actually walk you through how you could set this up quickly so you could play with it on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead, click on this code because I have GitHub CLI installed. I'm going to use that, but you could just as well as use get clone. I'm going to go ahead and paste the command, click enter. It's going to go ahead and clone my repository. Now let's CD into our project strappy ne next strappy life cycle example. What a long name. If we take a look at the package.json file, you're going to see that we have two commands set up to set everything up and dev to start a project. So I'm going to clear my screen. I'm going to run yarn setup. This is going to install all the dependencies, both for our backend project and our frontend project. And to start the project, I'm going to run yarn dev. This is going to go ahead and start your strappy project. Since we are starting it for our first time, make sure you create your first admin user. Make sure you add a secure password like monkey one, two, three, four exclamation point. No one will guess that ever. And when you click, let's start, you're going to see that we have our strappy instance set up and we also have our next JS application ready and ready to go. So this way you could play around with the example, but now that we have the project set up, let's stop the server and we're going to open it in VS code. 
we're going to have our Next.js project and our server project, which is our Strapi project. Inside client, what I'm doing is I'm just filling out a basic form that you could find in the components forms, sign up form that is calling a Next.js action. This action checks the, and validates our fields. If everything is okay, we go ahead and call our register user service, which basically makes a basic fetch request to our Strapi endpoint and pass our data. But all the magic is what happens here on the server. So let me close this down, navigate to our server folder, and we are injecting our lifecycle hooks inside our Strapi application. Inside the source folder, you'll find the index.ts file. And here's where I have all my code. I'm just going to close some of these functions so we could kind of talk about it. And you could find a detailed overview inside the blog post that I'm going to link in the description below. But basically what you need to do, you need to first register your lifecycle hooks and you're able to do that using strapi.db.lifecycles using the subscribe method. Here we're saying we want to register to our user's permission plugin and recalling two hooks. One is after create. This is going to go ahead and from our params get our full name and bio that we're passing and it's going to pass that data to our create user profile. Our create user profile is responsible doing two things. One, it checks if the profile already exists. If the profile exists, we just say, hey, the profile exists, no reason to create it. Otherwise, go ahead and using Strapi document service, recalling the service that belongs to the user profile endpoint and recreating that user profile with the data that we're passing from our form. And we're doing a similar thing on delete. So the reason why we're using before delete hook, because if we take a look at the delete user profile function, notice that we want to check if the user profile exists. And for that, we need the user ID. If we do after delete, the user has already been deleted. So we're not going to be able to get this user ID. So that's why we're doing before delete. We're checking the profile. We're getting the user profile and deleting it first, and then the user will get deleted. And again, we're just calling strapi.document service to make sure we're calling our user's profile endpoint or service and deleting. So just quick recap to set up a lifecycle hooks, so use strapi.db.lifecycle, subscribe. You pass the models on which you want to add the lifecycle hooks and you have things like before create, before update, after update. But in this case, I'm just using after create and before delete. And then you just create a function that handles the functionality that you want. In our case, creating a user profile and deleting a user profile. And the last thing I want to show you here, if you take a look at our form, we are passing additional fields, full name and a bio. By default, if you don't say that you want to pass additional field, this will fail validation. So in order to make sure that you're able to pass additional fields, the last thing I had to do is inside server config under plugins, taking a look at the user's permissions plugin settings, you have an attribute allowed fields where you're able to pass additional fields that you want to pass within the request when you're creating new users. So that's why I'm able to get the full name and bio passed to my user's permission endpoint because I set it up here. And again, you could see the link for the blog post in the description below. That's going to take you to this detailed article guiding you through all the steps, how you could set this up and build this from scratch yourself. But if you have any questions, just remember, we do have Strapi open office hours Monday through Friday, 1230 PM CST, where you could come in, talk to me, Derek and other community members to answer any questions that you may have on Strapi. I'll also make sure to link to the article regarding the new document service middleware that you should use most of the time instead of lifecycle hooks, unless you need to do something with either user's permission or our media library. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.